But as far as we know, nothing like this has ever been done before. It's not just some set, you know, it's actual museum. So it's going to be just a different quality altogether, a different scale altogether. I've never had to work on a level where you have to consider the next 30 years of your work. I think we have to compete with tablets and phones and a lot of touchscreen devices. And if you go back and you look at a lot of the museums from the 90s and 2000s, that is a lot of what was getting put in museums. A lot of touchscreens, a lot of things like that. And this competes directly with something you can physically interact with that you can't get on your iPad or your phone. Uh, so I do think that this is where museums need to go if they're going to continue to be successful and engaging. So we have uh, a whole number of actuators. Just in the top drive, we have up, down, we have uh, the pipe spinning at the bottom, and then we have several limit switches that are telling everything where they go. And then over on the rough neck, we have a number of even more actuators. That's moving out in. It's screwing the pipe in. It's unscrewing the pipe. It's uh, lifting the pipe. It's putting the pipe down. We tried to simulate what actually happens on the rig floor as best as we could. When we first brought the Roughneck in, someone from the industry thought it was completely real. They thought we had just bought one of those and brought it here. And they were moving it and some parts broke because they didn't realize that, you know, about 50% of it's fake. Like the top drive is about um, is 60% what it normally is in scale, or 50%. The Roughneck is 60%, and the Hydra Racker is about 50%. So in real life on the floor, these things are double this size. And this rig floor goes up probably about 500 feet. Not only that, but at the size they are, it all had to be brought up in the elevator in pieces and assembled here on site. So it wasn't like we could build in. We did build the thing entirely somewhere else, but then we had to disassemble it all and put it all back together. This one was really complicated because normally uh, when you're doing like setting structural beams and setting structural mechanics and doing rough carpentry and decking and uh, painting, uh, sanding, like within this proximity, we typically don't have a multi-million dollar LED wall behind us that's about this, this far away from where we're doing heavy cutting. And so that was incredibly challenging. Like every, like you get near it and you had to be incredibly conscious because if you bump into a panel, like you can destroy like a whole section. You're right. I mean, I think it probably goes without saying that we're here in Houston, which is the energy capital of the world in the mind of many people, including many of the energy companies. They believe that. So um, we're here in this, uh, this energy city, if you will, and there's no place that needs to have an energy hall more than this place, I would say. And I think a lot of our museum board members and a lot of our museum donors feel the same way. And for us, just saying, it's, it's what we need. I mean, to educate people about what's going on out in the Gulf of Mexico, 100, 100 miles offshore, and what's going on in the whole energy industry, which we barely touched on as we stand here in just the first exhibit of the Weiss Energy Hall, which has 29,000 more square feet of exhibits about energy in Houston, which is where it belongs. <laughs>